Good day students! Welcome to MathWise channel. I am Felicity Bautista, your math teacher. Have you heard of congruent triangles? Well, in this video, let's learn more about it. Alright students, let's get started on our lesson about congruent triangles. So our objectives are to define and illustrate triangle congruence, identify parts of congruent triangles, and understand the properties of triangle congruence. The term congruent means exactly equal size and shape. This size and shape should remain equal even when we flip, turn, or rotate the shapes. If two figures can be placed precisely over each other, they are said to be congruent. Congruence is represented by this symbol. Since congruence in objects implies equal size and shape, the symbol of congruence is made of two symbols, one above the other. There is a symbol of tilde which represents similarity in shape and the equal sign which represents equality in size. Here are some examples of congruent figures. Two bread slices which represent equal size and shape. If you place one slice of bread over the other, you will find that both the slices are of equal size and shape. Two Lego bricks which represent equal size and shape. If you place a Lego block over the other, you will find that both the Lego blocks are of equal size and shape. If two objects A and B are congruent to each other, we will write it as A is congruent to B. Let's move on to the parts of a triangle. A triangle has three sides, three vertices, and three angles. To name a triangle, we use the three vertices which are A, B, and C. While the sides are line segment AB, line segment BC, and line segment AC. Lastly, the angles are angle A, angle B, and angle C. Therefore, this triangle is named triangle ABC. Here is an example of congruent triangles. Two triangles are congruent if and only if all of their corresponding parts are congruent by the rule of corresponding parts of congruent triangles or CPCT. Okay, so how can we prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF? Since there are no given measurements or symbols, what we can do is we can rotate or flip the triangles so that we will be able to see if they have the same size and shape when they overlap. Their corresponding sides are congruent. Line segment AB is congruent to line segment DE, line segment BC is congruent to line segment EF, and line segment AC is congruent to line segment DF. Their corresponding angles are also congruent. Angle A is congruent to angle D, angle B is congruent to angle E, and angle C is congruent to angle F. Therefore, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Now let's talk about the properties of triangle congruence. Properties of congruence are used to prove that two or more figures are congruent. Three of the most common properties of congruence are reflexive property, symmetric property, and transitive property. First is the reflexive property. Triangle boy is congruent to triangle boy. It shows that a triangle is congruent to itself. Second is the symmetric property. If triangle boy is congruent to triangle Tom, then triangle Tom is congruent to triangle boy. In other words, if two triangles are congruent, then they are interchangeable. Last is the transitive property. If triangle dog is congruent to triangle cat, and triangle cat is congruent to triangle hen, then triangle dog is congruent to triangle hen. 
In other words, if the first triangle dog is congruent to the second triangle cat and the second triangle cat is congruent to the third triangle hen, then the first triangle dog is congruent to the third triangle hen. Alright students, that's all for our lesson today. I have prepared an assignment or practice problems to deepen your understanding. Please put your answers in the comment section below. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you all learned something new today. See you in our next lesson.